Part two, cause hunting. Chapter one, Mowgli learns the master words. What is told here happened some time before Mowgli left the pack and paid back Shere Khan for his treachery. It took place while Mowgli was learning the law of the jungle from Baloo. Baloo was pleased to have Mowgli as a pupil. The boy learned his lessons quickly, unlike the young wolves. As a man cub, Mowgli needed to learn more than the law. He was lucky to have both Baloo and Bagheera to guide him. Often Bagheera would come to see how his pet was getting on and would purr with his head against a tree while Mowgli recited the day's lesson to Baloo. Baloo taught him how to tell a rotten branch from a sturdy one and how to speak politely to the wild bees when he found a hive. He taught him what to say to Mang the bat when Mowgli disturbed him in the branches at noon. Mowgli also learned the strangers' hunting call. If the jungle people hunted beyond their own grounds, the call must be repeated aloud until it is answered. It means, please allow me to hunt here because I am hungry. The answer is, hunt then for food, but not for pleasure. Bagheera would have spoiled Mowgli, but Baloo did not allow it. Baloo would say, better he should be bruised from head to foot by me who loves him than that he should come to harm through ignorance. Wise Baloo was teaching Mowgli the master words of the jungle that would protect him from all the beasts. I will call you Mowgli, and he will say them for you, Baloo told Bagheera. Come, little brother. Mowgli slid down a tree trunk. He was very angry because of the work he had to do that day. I come for Bagheera and not for you, old Baloo, he said. That is no matter to me, Baloo said, but he was hurt by Mowgli's words. Tell Bagheera the master words of the jungle, what you have learned. For which people, Mowgli asked. The jungle has many tongues. I know them all. He was delighted to show off. See, Bagheera, not one wolf cub has ever come back to thank his teacher, Baloo said. To Mowgli, he said, say the word for the hunting people, if you can remember it. We be of one blood, you and I, Mowgli said, saying the words in the bear accent used by all of the hunting people. Despite Mowgli's ingratitude, Baloo was happy to have such a fine pupil. Mowgli was now well guarded because neither snake, bird, nor beast would hurt him. He fears no one, Baloo said, patting his big furry stomach with pride. Except his own tribe, Bagheera said under his breath. To Mowgli, he said, be careful of my ribs, little brother. What is all this dancing up and down? Mowgli had been trying to get Bagheera's attention by pulling at the panther's shoulder fur and kicking hard. He was now shouting at the top of his voice, I will have a tribe of my own and lead them through the branches all day. What is this new folly, my little dreamer? Bagheera asked. Yes, and throw branches and dirt at old Baloo, Mowgli went on. They have promised me this. Baloo's big paw scooped Mowgli off Bagheera's back. The boy could see that Baloo was angry. Mowgli, Baloo said, you have been talking with the monkey people. Mowgli looked to see if Bagheera was angry too. The panther's eyes were as hard as stones. The monkey people are without a law. They will eat anything, Bagheera said. When Baloo hurt my head, I went away and the great apes came down from the trees and had pity on me. No one else cared, Mowgli said. Their pity will do you no good, Baloo snorted. And then, man cub? And then they gave me nuts and pleasant things to eat and they carried me in their arms up to the top of the trees. They said I was their blood brother and should be their leader someday. They have no leader, said Bagheera. They lie. They have always lied. Why didn't you tell me about the monkey people, Baloo? They stand on their feet as I do. They no, do not hit me with their hard paws. They play all day. Bad, Baloo, Mowgli cried. I've taught you the laws of all the beasts that have laws. The monkey people do not have any law. They are outcasts. We of the jungle have no dealings with them. He had hardly spoken when a shower of nuts and twigs spattered down through the branches. They heard rough noises coming from above as the angry apes jumped up and down among the thin, thin tree branches. Little frog, remember this. Stay away from them, Baloo warned sternly. Chapter 2. Kidnapped by the Monkey People Since the monkey people lived in the trees, they rarely got in the way of the jungle people. But whenever they found a sick wolf or wounded beast, the monkeys tormented it. They stirred up a lot of trouble and contributed nothing to the life of the jungle. Since the other beasts of the jungle ignored them, the monkey people were thrilled to have captured Mowgli's attention. One of them said that Mowgli would be useful in their tribe. So they quietly followed Baloo, Bagheera, and their pupil through the jungle. Then, when it was time for the midday nap, they saw their chance. Meanwhile, Mowgli, who was very ashamed, slept peacefully between his protectors, having resolved to stay away from the monkey people. 
The next thing Mowgli knew, he felt the press of strong hands on his legs and arms and branches fluttering over his face. Looking down through the boughs of a tree, he saw Baloo rise and cry out, and Bagheera bounded up and the tree trunk with his teeth showing. The monkeys howled in triumph as they scattered to higher branches, out of Bagheera's reach. Two of the strongest monkeys caught Mowgli under the arms and swung him through the treetops, twenty feet at a bound. The motion made Mowgli sick, but he couldn't help but feel a thrill at the wild rush and cries of victory. From the tops of the trees, Mowgli could see clear across the jungle for miles. Mowgli knew that he had to send word back to Baloo and Bagheera, who by this point were far behind. When he looked down, Mowgli could see only the tops of the branches, so he stared upward and saw, far away, Chill the kite. Chill was balancing and wheeling as he kept watch over the jungle. He had seen that the monkeys were carrying something and dropped a few hundred yards to find out whether their load was good to eat. When he realized that it was a man cub and heard him giving the kite call, Chill was quite surprised. Mark my trail, Mowgli shouted. Tell Baloo of the CNE pack and Bagheera of the Council Rock. In whose name? Chill asked. He had never seen Mowgli before, but of course he had heard of him. Mowgli the frog, Mowgli shouted. Chill nodded and rose up until he was no bigger than a speck of dust, and there he hung, watching with his telescope eyes. They never go far, Chill said with a chuckle, and this time they are in for trouble if I know Baloo and Bagheera. So Chill gathered his feet up under him and waited. While Mowgli was being spirited away by the monkeys, Baloo and Bagheera argued with each other. Bagheera had tried to climb up to Mowgli, but the thin branches broke beneath his weight and he slipped down, his claws full of bark. Why didn't you warn the man cub? He roared to poor Baloo, who was lumbering off in the hope of overtaking the monkeys. A lot of good all those lessons will do now. Hush, we may catch him yet, Baloo panted. At that speed? Bagheera laughed. Sit still and think. This is no time for chasing. They may drop him if we follow too close. The monkey people are crazy, Bagheera continued, but Mowgli is wise and well taught. Above all, he has eyes that make the jungle people afraid. But the monkey people are evil and are not afraid of us because they are out of our reach. Bagheera licked one forepaw thoughtfully. Suddenly, Baloo smacked his head and shouted, I am a fool. Why didn't I think of this before? The monkey people fear Ka, the rock snake. He can climb as well as they can. He steals the young monkeys in the night. Bagheera doubted that Ka would help them. But Baloo said, he is very old and very cunning, and he is always hungry. Promise him many goats. Ka sleeps for months after he has eaten. He may be sleeping now, and if he is awake, he will want to kill his own goats, Bagheera said. Baloo would not be swayed by Bagheera's doubts. You and I together will make him see that Mowgli must be rescued, he said. Then they left together to find Ka. Chapter 3. Ka Helps Out They found Ka basking in the afternoon sun. Ka put on quite a show for his visitors. He looked splendid as he darted his head along the ground and twisted his body, which measured 30 feet, into knots and curves. Look at him lick his lips, Baloo said. He hasn't eaten. Be careful, Bagheera. He is always a little blind after he has changed his skin and quick to strike. Ka's threat was not poison. Ka's weapon was his strength. When he wrapped his huge coils around an enemy, there was no more to be said. Good hunting, Baloo cried, sitting up on his haunches. Good hunting for us all, Ka answered. One of us at least needs food. Is there any news of game afoot? A doe, perhaps, or even a young buck? We're hunting, Baloo said casually, trying not to make Ka suspicious. Allow me to come with you, Ka said. The branches are not what they were when I was young. Now they are all rotten twigs and dry boughs. Maybe your weight has something to do with it, Baloo suggested. Perhaps, Ka replied, but I think the fault is this new timber. I almost fell on my last hunt. The noise of my slipping woke the monkey people, and they taunted me with evil names. You footless yellow earthworm, Bagheera said under his whiskers. Sss, Ka hissed. Have they ever called me that? Something like that. They have no shame and will say anything, even that you have lost all your teeth and will not face anything bigger than a kid because you are afraid of the he-goat's horns, Bagheera said sweetly. Now a snake, especially a wary old python like Ka, rarely shows that he is angry. But Baloo and Bagheera could see the big muscles bulge on either side of Ka's throat. The monkey people have moved their grounds, he said quietly. Today, I heard them whooping among the treetops. We're following them, Baloo said. Ka was curious. 
It must be no small thing that sends you on the trail of the monkey people, he said. Indeed, Baloo began. I am no more than the old and sometimes foolish teacher of the law of the sea and wolf cubs. And Bagheera here is Bagheera, the panther said, snapping his jaws shut, for he didn't believe in being humble. Those nut stealers and pickers of palm leaves have stolen our man cub. Have you heard of Mowgli? Iki the porcupine spoke of a man cub entering a wolf pack, Ka replied, but I did not believe it. It is true, Baloo said. This man cub is wise and bold. Besides, we love him. Right now, this man cub is in the hands of the monkey people, and we need your help, Bagheera interrupted. You are the only one they fear. They have good reason to fear me, Ka said. They are foolish and vain. They drop whatever is entertaining them at the moment for anything new that happens to come along. Baloo and Bagheera nodded. What else did they call me? Yellowfish, was it not? Earthworm, Bagheera said. The names are so shameful. Now, where did they go with the cub? Ka asked. Toward the sunset, I believe, Baloo said, shrugging his big shoulders. We thought you would know, Ka. How would I know? Ka asked. I do not hunt monkeys. Look up, Baloo of the c and wolf pack, a voice rang out. Baloo looked up to see where the voice came from. It was Chill the kite, swooping down with the sun shining on his outspread wings. It was near Chill's bedtime, but he had been all over the jungle looking for Baloo. What is it? Baloo asked. I have seen Mowgli with the monkey people, Chill reported. They have taken him beyond the river to the monkey city. I have told the bats to watch through the night. Good hunting to all of you below. Chapter 4. The Cold Lairs They all knew where the monkey city was, but few of the jungle people ever went there. An old deserted city, lost and buried in the jungle, this place was also known as the Cold Lairs. It is half a night's journey at full speed, Bagheera said. Baloo looked worried, so he added, I will go as fast as I can. We dare not wait for you, Baloo. You can follow along behind. So Bagheera and Ka raced ahead. Soon Mowgli arrived with his captors at the Cold Lairs. The place was a heap of ruins. At first, Mowgli was enchanted because he had never seen a city before. A king had built it long ago on a little hill. Trees had grown into and out of the walls, and wild creepers hung out of the windows of the towers. The crumbled remains of a palace crowned the hill. The rest of the city consisted of courtyards, fountains, and rows of roofless houses, all in the last stages of decay. The monkey people thought this was far superior to the jungle, but Mowgli knew better. The monkeys dragged Mowgli into one of their dwellings. For a while, they played and danced around, but then they lost interest in him. I wish to eat, Mowgli said. A number of the monkeys raced off to find nuts, but they began fighting on the road and didn't come back. Mowgli was angry, as well as sore and hungry from his terrifying trip, so he left the lair to wander about the city, giving the stranger's hunting call as he went. No one answered. When he reached the city wall, some monkeys drew him back. They took him to a terrace above the reservoirs. The ruins of a white marble summer house stood in the center of the terrace. The domed roof had fallen halfway in and blocked an underground passage from the palace. But the marble fretwork on the walls inlaid with precious stones of every color, was quite beautiful. The moon came up behind the hill and sent beams of light through the open work that cast shadows on the ground. Mowgli wanted to sleep. He was tired of the monkeys chattering. When a cloud came by and covered the moon, Mowgli said to himself, if it were a big enough cloud, I might try to run away in the darkness, but I am too tired. Chapter five, Bagheera and Ka to the rescue. Bagheera and Ka were watching that same cloud. They had finally arrived at the monkey city. They sat in a ditch and discussed how they might ambush the monkeys, for they were far outnumbered. I will go to the west wall, Ka whispered, and come down swiftly with the slope of the ground in my favor. I wish that Baloo were here. We must do what we can, Bagheera said. When that cloud covers the moon, I will go to the entrance. They are holding some sort of council there. Meanwhile, Mowgli still sat wondering what to do. Then he heard Bagheera's light feet on the terrace and saw the panther striking out in all directions at the monkeys who sat in a circle around Mowgli, 50 or 60 deep. Seeing that there was only one opponent, the monkey closed over Bagheera, biting, scratching, and tearing at him. A few others grabbed Mowgli, dragged him up the wall of the summer house, and pushed him through the hole of the broken dome. Mowgli fell as Baloo had taught him, landing on his feet. Mowgli quickly gave the snake's call. Soon he heard rustling and hissing all around him. He gave the call a second time. Stand still, little brother, for thy feet may do us harm, the snake said. 
Mowgli stood as quietly as he could, listening to the scuffling around him. Bagheera was putting up a good fight, but he was fighting for his life. Get to the water tanks, Bagheera, Mowgli shouted. When he heard Mowgli's voice, Bagheera felt a surge of courage. He worked his way to the reservoirs. As he arrived, he heard Baloo's war cry come trumpeting out of the jungle. Baloo panted up to the terrace and disappeared as a wave of monkeys surrounded him. He stretched out his armed arms and grabbed a number of them in a huge bear hug. Then he began to bat them all away. Mowgli heard a splash and knew that Bagheera had reached the tanks. The monkeys could not follow him and they were enraged. Bagheera lifted his head from the water, gasped for breath, and then, in despair, gave the snake's call. Baloo, who certainly had enough to handle on his own, couldn't help chuckling at the prideful panther asking for help. Ka delivered his first stroke, hissing into the crowd around Baloo. The monkeys scattered, screaming, Run! It is Ka! They had heard the stories told by, the, told by their elders about Ka, slithering through the night, stealing the strongest monkeys. Soon the monkeys were cowering in their hiding places, and all was silent. Baloo sighed in relief. Mowgli heard Bagheera shaking his wet sides as he came up from the tank. Then the loud clamor broke out again. The monkeys leaped higher up the walls. They clung around the necks of the big stone idols and shrieked as they skipped along the battlements. Still captive in the summer house, Mowgli glared out at the monkeys. Get Mowgli out of that trap, Bagheera gasped. Ka, we owe our lives to you, Baloo said. He had been mauled in the struggle and was a bit shaky. Ka shrugged off Baloo's thanks. Where is the man cub? he asked. Here, Mowgli cried from the summer house. I cannot climb out. The curve of the broken dome was above his head. Ka found a crack in the marble tracery. He tapped it lightly with his head a few times and then lifting six feet of his body off the ground, he sent off a round of smashing blows, leading with his nose. The wall broke and fell in a cloud of dust. Freed from his prison, Mowgli leaped through the opening and ran to Baloo and Bagheera, flinging an arm around each of their necks. Baloo hugged Mowgli and asked if he was hurt. I am sore, hungry, and bruised. But look at you. All of you have been hurt badly, Mowgli, Mowgli replied. And so have the monkey people, Bagheera said, looking around at the dead monkeys on the terrace. Ka saved us, Bagheera added. Mowgli turned and saw the great python's head swaying a foot above. So this is the man cub, Ka said. His skin is very soft. Mowgli looked at Ka and repeated the snake's call. We are of one blood. Tonight I take my life from you. My kill shall be your kill if ever you are hungry. Ka's eyes twinkled. Thank you, little brother, he said. I owe a debt to you and Baloo and Bagheera. Good hunting to you all, my masters, Mowgli replied. Baloo nodded his approval. Well said, he growled. He has a brave heart and a courteous tongue, Ka said. These will carry him far in the jungle. Now it is time to leave, and quickly. The moon sets, and soon there will not be enough light to see by. His gaze shifted to the monkeys huddled together on the walls and the battlements. Bagheera was still angry with Mowgli for causing so much trouble. What says the law of the jungle, Baloo? he asked. Baloo was inclined to let Mowgli off easily, but he could not argue with the law, which says that remorse does not eliminate the need for punishment. He reminded Bagheera that Mowgli was very little. But he has done mischief, Bagheera said. Mowgli, what do you have to say for yourself? Nothing. I did wrong. Mowgli answered. Bagheera gave Mowgli half a dozen love taps. They would hardly have awakened one of his own cubs, but for a boy, they were pretty harsh. When it was all over, Mowgli bravely picked himself up without a word. Now, Bagheera said, jump on my back, little brother, and we will go home. Mowgli laid his head down on Bagheera's back and slept peacefully all the way.